Hey Gumbooters and welcome back to the Gumboot Garden. We're gonna do a little bit of a catch up today and I wanna show you around the winter garden and the few things that I have growing and how they're progressing, but we are also going to start some of our spring seeds. This is the first round of spring seeds. We're gonna get them started today. I do apologize if I sound a little bit off or look a little bit off. I have been battling with a bit of sickness this past week. All winter long people have been coming down with sickness and I have finally caught it. So I have some tea here with my little concoction of like herbs that are good for your immune system with some lemon and some manuka honey. But let's go ahead and start in with my in-ground bed and show you some of the things that are growing over here. So things are a little bit muddy and a little bit messy, but just ignore that. Um, what I want to show you in this section is this is my in-ground bed and I have actually expanded this um, over the winter time. My first year gardening, I actually started with this little space for corn. Let me show you. That was just around here. But then the following year, I expanded on that garden space a little bit. So where those onions are, I brought the bed out there and then also down where that cabbage is. That was my area. But this year I have expanded it even further. As you can see, this is all like dirt here. So this is like the entrance of my garden here, right where you guys are standing. And I did a straight line cut all the way to my shed. And I thought this would make it look a little bit more, a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner. And it expanded on my garden space. So I'm really excited about this, that I've cleared all of this out and I have more in-ground growing space. But I wanna take a closer look at those cabbages that are in this bed because they are looking fantastic. This is my first year growing cabbages and they are looking beautiful. There's no head that has formed yet, but the leaves are definitely starting to fold in on each other and starting to form that head. So pretty soon we'll have some cabbages. We are dealing with minor pest pressure, but you know, that's all right. They're just kind of staying towards the outer leaves. So long as they're not going right into the head of my cabbage, there are no complaints coming from me. I did think that half of these were going to be cabbages and the other half were going to be cauliflower, but they all seem to kind of have inner leaves that are folding in towards like a cabbage shape. So I guess they're all cabbages. I don't know. We'll find out in a couple months when they're all ready to be harvested, I guess. It is a bit of a muddy mess around here, but not in front of my shed. <laughs> So I have actually put down some fresh wood chips in front of my shed and extended it a little bit around this tire because I thought it would look really nice. So I've been looking all over the place for free wood chips this year and have not been able to find them. The wood chips seem to be a bit like gold around here. Uh, I know there are plenty of places and everyone's always saying, oh yeah, just call up your local arborist and they'll drop off free wood chips. Not true here in Auckland. I have called all of the arborists around Auckland looking for free wood chips and you know one of the bigger arborists here they give all of their wood chips to the council who then makes compost and sells it and all of the others also do the same for themselves. So all the other arborists have learned that they can make a good profit off of doing this so they keep their wood chips they sell them like that they make compost from them so they they're on to us guys they're on to us we can't get free wood chips around here um there was one place that i did call and he said oh yeah sure i'll drop them off when we're in the area but unfortunately he hasn't been in the area yet he hasn't dropped anything off so i'm just using last year's wood chips and this is actually the last of them so all of my other pathways that i have covered in wood chips that are breaking down are yeah, I need to sort out something else for them because if these wood chips don't come, my pathways are going to get muddy quick, either that or they're just gonna fill up with weeds again, which I really didn't want because it was a lot of effort to kind of dig them out so they were flat and then put the wood chips on them. But, um, and I had more places that I wanted to do that this year, but well, you know, I might just have to 
go ahead and pay for some, which I really didn't want to do. We'll see. We'll see. But let's move on to the next bed here. So this in summertime is my indeterminate tomato bed. And it's also where I planted all of my peppers this past year and those gosh darn peas that I had plant and then replant. And they have finally started to grow. And grow they are. They have finally grown all the way up my trellis and even past. So they are now outgrowing my trellis and I'm sure they have a whole lot more growing to do because they've really just started to take off. So come springtime when they actually start to produce peas or snow peas for me, then they are going to be I'm going to need to find a taller structure or something to like help up there. Either that or just try and get them to start to trail along the top. I don't know. I was expecting them to grow all winter and for us to get peas in either late autumn or early winter. But now we're looking at getting them in spring, which that's fine. That's cool. We'll have another thing to harvest in springtime while we watch our other one, our other seedlings grow they have not started to produce any pods yet maybe here what's going on here there is i think a flower starting to form so maybe soon we should get or start to see some peas but but i did plant two different types i planted snow peas and I planted peas and there is definitely one of those that is doing significantly better than the other. I just don't know which one was which because I had kind of replanted them and I think the second time I just kind of tossed them in wherever. Um, but these guys are doing fantastic. If we look over here, these are significantly smaller. They're not even halfway up our trellis yet so I don't know which ones are which but I do think one of them was called Goliath and I don't know if they were Goliath peas or snow peas but I'm assuming the Goliath ones are the ones that are looking so big but I don't know in this bed I also have some broccoli growing which is facing a bit more pest pressure over here than the cabbages were they are also slightly behind I think the cabbages but we should get some heads again in springtime once our seedlings are growing we should be getting a harvest of some broccoli and then these watermelon radishes that have not turned into anything they have the tiniest of roots down there so i don't think they're going to bulb up but we'll try them again in springtime and see if we can get an early summer late spring harvest of them that do bulb up and look nice for us I have a package and this is one of the things that I wanted to tell you guys about today. Um, this package is full of seedling pots and when I say seedling pots I mean like 300 seedling pots. So we're trying something a little bit different this spring. And why do you say would you buy hundreds of seedling pots? Well of course I'm thinking of selling them at the market. I have no idea 300 is too many, way too few, I have no idea. So if you guys are in the Auckland area, hopefully around mid to late October, I will have enough seeds and seedlings to go to market with and you can stop by and see me and pick up some plants. Now, this is all very, very early in, in everything I, um, have not even started seeds yet. So we'll see if it goes into anything and if we're able to do this, but I have the pots. I also bought some more seedling heat mats so that we can get our seeds to germinate. Last year, it worked fantastic. I'll put the link below of where I got my heat mats. And um, yeah, but the, the making putting them on the heat mats to germinate is fantastic. They germinate like that. And then as soon as they've germinated, you want to take them off of the heat mats so that they don't get too like long and leggy um, and then move them out to the greenhouse, which I don't have my greenhouse yet. But next week when I get paid, 
I <laughs> will be buying myself a larger greenhouse to fit all of these extra seeds that I'm going to be growing. So yeah, that is a plan. I'm going to try and sell some seeds at her seedlings at the markets. I figure that I'll start small this year. And then if I do really well and I'm able to get rid of all of these seedlings and sell them all, then I'll expand it and do bigger things. Um, if I don't sell my seedlings at the market, I'm gonna have a whole lot of extra plants. So hopefully they sell. <laughs> Otherwise I'll be growing heaps and heaps of things around the yard in random places that I'll have to find. But let's get back out to the garden and we'll talk a bit more about how things are growing. Here we have my leeks and they are growing really well. Last year I had a fantastic leek harvest and I'm hoping that the same happens this year. Soon I will have to mound them up. By mounding them up I mean we are starting to have the leeks come up where they're growing tall and this space here in order to get the nice white long bottom piece of your leeks not only do we plant them deep but we also want to mound them up so when i get some soil in or i have a couple bags of compost already i will go through here and mound them up a bit higher probably up to like here to try and just get this bit to be nice and white and keep growing nice and thick so that we have another fantastic leek harvest this year because we love our leeks we have our leeks all the time with our roast dinner on sundays creamy leeks yum they're so good creamy leeks yum creamy cheesy leeks with the cheese then in this same bed we have another little bit of beautiful cabbages that are growing they're just starting to fold in together and form their heads and notice it's been so warm this winter that my poor little bok choy has gone to seed like what is this and winter it's going to seed not complaining about the warm mild winter though there are onions in this bed too. Some of them are a little bit bigger than others, so I don't really know what's going on. My onions, I never have great luck with. So this one is looking a little bit bigger, but then, I mean, I have ones next to it that are so tiny, so I don't know what's going on but hopefully we get at least some nice onions this year. I was watching someone new on YouTube the other day. I can't remember what she's called. Brie, maybe Brie someone. She was talking about her onions and she had these massive massive onions bigger than anything i've ever seen and she was saying how much she feeds them like every three weeks she feeds them with um like a fish and sea seaweed fertilizer and she does that all the way up until i think they start to bulb up if i can find that video again i will link it down below but i have not fertilized these onions at all all winter so that might be my first problem on why i can't grow onions i could start now maybe we'll get something but um or we could just try next year <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't i might when i when i amend the leeks and mound them up maybe i will also put some nice fertilizer on the onions and see if we can get them to grow into something this year in the same bed, we have also had coriander just growing and growing all winter long. We've had fresh coriander, which is awesome. And on this trellis where I had planted heaps of sweet peas, they're finally starting to hit the trellis. So again, another one of those things that we are we didn't have in autumn or winter time when I had originally intended them to be because I planted things quite late this year. Um, I have a feeling these sweet peas are really going to take off soon in springtime and they'll probably grow all summer would be my guess and I'm gonna let them. So I did have other plans for this big trellis. I wanted to plant cucumbers and a few other things on it, a few tomatoes. I'm still going to do that whether those sweet peas are growing wild on here or not. And we're just gonna see how they all work together. My lettuce and carrot bed is doing fantastic. So I have my carrots down at that end. They're starting to grow tall. I need to get this netting off of here soon because they're starting to grow through it. Um, and the critter has stopped coming, so we can take this off. But my carrots are growing really well and 
my lettuce these are all these like seeds i just sprinkled a million of here the arugula or rocket down that end and then the mescaline mix so oh maybe someone oh that's snails i think are getting in there but we've got heaps of lettuce growing i absolutely love arugula yum it's so good the taste of it we also have spinach here this is popeye spinach typically we have perpetual spinach that i grow every year i didn't grow chard in perpetual spinach like i typically do usually we're swimming in perpetual spinach and chard and i have to come up with all these like weird recipes to try and cook up heaps of spinach in it but this year i didn't do that it's nice to have chard um for different types of recipes because we usually throw that into meals and cook them up where this popeye spinach is more of a nice like salad spinach that you can toss in with other greens and yeah i think i prefer this popeye spinach a little bit more but we'll still grow chard and perpetual spinach each year um it just didn't happen this year i should talk about this blueberry plant back here so when i showed you guys last it was starting to flower it is in full bloom right now we don't get a frost here so i don't think they're going to be damaged and fall off but because they're so early in their blooming i'm hoping that they still form normally um, they might just be a little bit early i hope but I really, really want blueberries. There are so many flowers on just this one plant this year. I just need to find a way to keep them protected from the birds. The birds were already on the blueberry plants. They're these little like green birds. Last year that you were eating my sunflowers, um, but I don't know what they're on there for. Are they eating the bugs off of it? Are they eating the flowers are they getting nectar from the flowers if you have any idea what they're after should i be like covering up my blueberries already are they eating the flowers so i won't get any blooms i don't know so if you can help me out now let's talk about this bed now this bed doesn't have much in it it has my sugar rush peach peppers which look very very yellow they had so much new growth on this about a month ago and now i think because it's gotten a slightly colder it's not liking that so they've just gone really yellow but that's what's happening with that um all of this is my garlic and then i have my four heads of elephant garlic and so far oh maybe on this one a little bit it's doing really well um it's growing nice nicely so it looks better than it typically looks at this time of year oftentimes when we plant garlic rust is an issue there is maybe very very slightly a tiny bit of rust on these right now but they're still pretty green and they're growing nice and tall so i'm hoping that because we're not it hasn't been too wet it hasn't been too cold that we're just going to kind of coast through this a little bit and they're going to stay nice and healthy and keep growing and hopefully we'll get a good garlic harvest this year but i'll keep you updated with that as well however this elephant garlic is still looking pretty puny so i don't know why they haven't gotten taller but next to my regular garlic it's like half the height. Is that normal? Does elephant garlic grow shorter than regular garlic? I feel like it shouldn't be. <laughs> so something weird may be going on. Maybe I need to fertilize that as well. If you have an idea, if you've grown it before, just let me know. <laughs> Give me a heads up and I'll try to fix that. I've got to watch out here though. I know everyone loves nasturtium, right? Nasturtium, it grows so big and beautiful. It's an edible flower, edible leaves, edible everything. But look at it. It just grows everywhere and it's reaching, reaching for my bed and I can't let it get in there. This is all nasturtium here. It just go grows crazy. And down into the bush, I mean, even behind all of that, like, wild ginger that's there it's all nasturtium the only place that it will not grow is when i'm trying to plant it this plant here is supposed to have the most beautiful different color blooms if only i could see more than just this 
puny one. I mean, look how tiny the leaves are in comparison to the massive one that are like dinner plates over here. <laughs> Who knows, just another one of those things. <laughs> We've moved over into the vineyard garden where there's not really much going on. I have my strawberries here that are looking quite sad because they're more dormant than anything. I do need to get through here and um, tidy it up a little bit, but I haven't done that yet. I still have strawberries growing in the pathways. I haven't pulled them all out yet. All of these. These are all strawberries growing in the pathways. That's okay. Um, behind me, my calendula, my calendula that I planted last spring, it has just been blooming all year long. I love calendula and it's so good. You can do so many things with it. So that I am going to keep growing. I'm probably also going to seed some more um, in a few weeks time, just direct seed it in there, just to fill it out a little bit more. I have put down new mulch on this pathway and took some of the old mulch that was in this pathway and put it into the garden beds because it had broken down so much it had this beautiful rich dark color to it um, so I was able to just put it in as beautiful soil and then top up my pathway however <laughs> at this point in time the border that I had for this bed is just it's level with everything. So Ali has promised he's going to help me this spring and get out here and help build up some more beds for me. He's got the pepper bed to do. He has out here I'd like him to do. And then I have also expanded things again, again here. Um, I have big plans. <laughs> so there's a little bit more that I want him to create a border for. And that additional expansion I'm talking about is this all along here, all along the fence. So I have started to dig it out here. So it's going to be quite a thin little section that I am going to plant flowers in. And I just want him to put a border along the outside and then over on that side as well. So the weeds don't put pressure on the flowers that are growing. Now I haven't fully finished digging this all out. So what I'm doing is because the weeds we have, I think it's Bermuda grass or something similar to Bermuda grass. Bermuda why can I not say it? Bermuda grass. Um, but it just vines and roots all around. So I have actually dug up the top layer of all of this just to make sure that it's not gonna really grow back as quickly. And then I've put cardboard, two layers of cardboard on there. Um, I have done a video previously saying how I do this. I do not wet my cardboard. A lot of people do um, because we have such wet springs and winters. I don't need to wet mine because it just does it itself. Um, so um, I have started to do that. I haven't finished going all the way up, but I want to go all the way up to that like Manuka tree up there. And I also want to do it along the other side of that calendula. So there's quite a bit left. I have to dig out and put cardboard on, but I'm hoping if Allie's helping me, then maybe he'll help dig some of it out. We'll see. <laughs> I might do a little bit more later today, but it takes me so long to do that digging and then transporting the, the, grass and soil elsewhere so you know a man's help it it helps a lot sometimes but don't tell him so that's what we have going on in the garden so far this spring uh, now we're gonna go head on to the deck and we're okay so does anybody else's male dog squat to pee and not lift their leg that's weird right like Anyways, we're going to head on to the deck and we're going to get our first round of spring seeds sown. So let's get started. We've run into a problem. So there is construction work going on outside of our house. They're putting in a sidewalk along the street and I wasn't able to get my car into the driveway and my soil, my plant, my potting soil is all the way down the street. So maybe we're not going to do any sowing of seeds today. I'll push that back probably either to tonight or till Sunday when I can get my car closer and I don't have to carry 
that big bag of soil all the way down the road. So we are going to end the video here for today, guys. I hope you at least enjoyed spending some time with me in the garden and catching up a little bit. When I am sowing seeds, I will update you guys on what I'm sowing and we'll talk about our seeds together. But for now, I'll see you later. Have a good afternoon, guys. See ya.